Hey guys, welcome back to Our Family Nest uh, Thursday. Ken edition, uh, what, it's been two weeks since we talked. Um, last video, I guess I have to remain um, Disney Channel oriented. I can't discuss topics that are uh, confrontational because YouTube didn't like it. <laughs> Whatever. I don't think I even said anything that bad. I'm not going to rehash it. You can go back and watch the video. Let me know if you think the same thing. But I guess I have to stick to topics that are more family oriented versus political, etc. I will bring up TikTok. Holy cow. It used to be such a fun app. Actually, Facebook used to be fun too, but it's so buried with ads. And uh, TikTok now, it's just all this. Everyone, it used to be fun to watch, and it still is if you just uh, go through, but I actually started enjoying the live pieces of TikTok, watching people go live. And it's, I don't want to sound hypocritical, but it's it's like everyone has an opinion about everything now and it's just all this bickering and slamming and I just I just I don't know if I can do it anymore. It's just not it's not good for your heart, I guess, to on a daily basis um sit and bicker and fight about things that you just necessarily don't have control over and this person's bad and this person's good or this person's it's just God, we're all just people. We don't need to necessarily shove it down everybody's throat, I guess. I, I don't know. And Move on from TikTok. So I'm gonna, my goal, uh, partial through Lent, is to minimize my TikToking. <laughs> so, um, too many addictions, I guess. But like I said, I don't want to sound hypocritical and say people can't express themselves because here I am talking about myself, right? So I, I don't. I think uh, you know people should be able to express themselves. But gosh, some of it's so. I guess the word I'm looking for is harsh. Everything's so dang harsh. It's just. It's. It's sad. So. Uh, what have I been up to last two weeks? You know, just really trying to fight through the winter blues. Uh, we're officially at spring now. Weather's not quite cooperating, which it typically doesn't. I mean, the pool, what are we, usually maybe end of April? So we get another month and a half, month and a half to get to go. Um, things uh, with my business, I think there's a question in here about that. So I'll say that uh, I want to appreciate everyone that sent in some question topics for Ken to discuss because I can talk about anything, but sometimes I don't know what to talk about. So I appreciate everyone that uh, sent in the, com uh, the comments to her. I think it was through Instagram. She photoshot them. So I'm going to kind of go through as many as I can today. Um, I may not get to all of them, but I'll save them for, you know, next session. But uh, uh, in regards to me, what I've been doing, my college basketball March Madness bracket busted pretty much right away. So I don't have a chance and I don't think anyone does, but I had Purdue winning it all. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. So anyways, um, I've actually spent, usually I watch March Madness quite a bit. This year I spent more time watching the wrestling. It was very, very entertaining. Some, a lot of upsets. It was just, it was exciting. Um, as for the Dolphins, lots of acquisitions. The defense is going to be at least three times better than they were last year. We got Jalen Ramsey, new defensive coordinator, a bunch of pieces coming in. We haven't done a whole lot on the offense. We got rid of Sherfield and um, haven't done a whole lot there. I think we still need some offensive linemen. Um, we resigned all our running backs. We got rid of Gesicki. I'm not disappointed there, but I think they need to beef up the line. And I think the, the upgrade of the defense is really going to help the offense. Hopefully, we can sustain longer drives. I don't want to say three and outs because Dolphins actually were in the top, I think, five or six and three and outs. But that doesn't mean you get your first down and then you're in <laughs> four and out. So not, I've seen that stat. Anyways, I'm excited about uh, the Fins this year. Hopefully uh, it'll be a good year for both Notre Dame and, uh, and Dolphins. So dive into some questions here. Uh, again, um, looks like uh, Delay uh, Garris. first question of the day is... Uh, can you talk about, uh, can can he talk about uh, what his life was growing up or has he talked about? I'm sure I have. Um, I'll, I'll kind of give you the quick elevator story of Ken growing up. Um, mom and dad married 50 years, I think, before mom passed. Uh, two older brothers. I was the youngest. I was picked on. You know, the typical young brother syndrome. That's probably why the way I am that I am. I, uh, I lived... I was picked on, but it didn't bother me, I guess, per se. Maybe it did. Hell, I don't know. If someone psychoanalyzed me, they'd probably be able to pick through my brain and come up with, with something. But uh, I felt like my life was pretty carefree up until, I don't know, let's just call it 40. Um, I, did, I just I went with the flow. I've always been a go with the flow. Had fun. Didn't put too much... Never stressed out about anything. I just I was always moving forward. So I, I grew up. I played youth youth football. I played baseball. 
Um, just like everyone else, went to junior high, went to high school, played uh, some high school sports, um, you know, met my high school girlfriend. That became my life uh, for the next, you know, three years. And then, you know, younger adulthood, you know, a couple girlfriends after that. Uh, and then Candy and I met, and you guys obviously can probably see most of that story on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, I was a um, young, athletic once really good looking kid <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened but uh you know just yeah it was, it was fun I, I wouldn't change a thing with my childhood or or anything I did growing up I I was uh my mom always said if she had me first I would have been the last I I was um nothing major never busted by the cops or anything but man I did it all um I didn't hold back I mean we rode our bikes everywhere we tried everything we did everything we were we were hellions. So energetic. I had tons of energy. And then, uh, you know, life moves on. So that's, I, I don't know if that answers your question in full, but I could probably do an entire series on my, my childhood and stir up all these uh, past incidences. But uh, uh, where do I see uh, each kid in five years? I have no idea. Um, I think uh, Blake has really uh, kind of grown up, I guess, in the last year. Um, he just is more adultish, I guess. Andrew's been on that path. I think Andrew's going to continue doing what he's doing. He Andrew has comfort zones, and uh, I think he'll uh, you know be at the company he's with for a, a long time and you know stay stable. Chasing Carly, I, I don't know. I mean, Carly's in school. Uh, I'm not sure what she'll end up doing for a career. But the bigger question is, what am I going to? What do I see myself doing in five years? And I can't even answer that question for you. So let alone tell you what my kids. Hopefully, we're we have some grandkids, and uh, honestly, I, I I hope the world. I don't want to say it goes backwards, but maybe it goes slightly, slightly backwards. And I hate to say this, but it isn't until really bad things happen that people are more humbled in life. And I almost feel like that's something we need to, to get back to humble and, and care for one another because everyone's just so ruthless right now. And again, I could, I could go on forever about that. Thoughts, advice on being a step parent and how to make it successful. That's a great question. So I've seen uh, and I've dealt with through coaching a lot of um, separated families, step parents, all that good stuff. And uh, I've seen some not so good ones. And uh, I can take uh, an example from, from ours, I guess. Uh, I think the key is you have a, a couple that have split, child involved, and there's always going to be that anima, not always, I shouldn't say always, but most of the time, anima animosity between, you know, the two separated, you know, Candy and her ex or what have you. Uh, it's just, it's, it's never a good situation because it becomes uh, a battle of power. Who gets what, who, who's doing, who's doing better. And I have friends that, you know, that, that are going through, have gone through this or go through, and it's just, it's, it's living hell. And the thing is, is at the end of the day, you, you can't change other people. So, all you can do is really focus on um, you and your situation. So it's not anything that I think Candy could have done differently. She, I mean, she did everything that she was supposed to as a, as a mom uh, and, and her son. But I think what I did to really help the situation is I never wanted to step into Andrew's life and be his dad because he has a dad. I always wanted to be, all right, these are my rules kind of thing. So when you're in my household, this is... This is the formation you'll follow, but I never wanted to replace his father. So therefore, I took it on my own to, even though there's always that, that wall, is to create a relationship with, you know, Candy's ex. And I did that. So I wanted to include him uh, in, in the adventures of, of Andrew. And most of that came through sports and stuff like that. I actually coached baseball with, with Andrew's dad. Um, we worked actually pretty well together, um, but that would allow him to be involved in his son's life. I taught him some of the skills of what I have, and we ended up coaching together for, for many years. Um, and it made it, you know, more comfortable in situations, less bickering, you know. I mean, there was a lot of the rough stuff in the beginning with child support and who gets what and all that good stuff. But I tried, I think from my standpoint, and, and I hopefully instilled this into Candy, is to create the two-family system to be as normal as possible so that Andrew wouldn't even notice a difference other than the transaction. Hey, I'm going to my dad's or I'm going to my mom's, but never once did he really have to deal with any of the bickering or tensions or any of that good stuff. And quite honestly, I think both parties, excuse me, I'm drinking tea. Uh, both parties um, 
you know, made it happen so that it was kind of a seamless thing for Andrew. And we ended up raising a pretty good kid, I, I think. So um, that would be my advice. My advice to anyone going through a uh, stepchild situation is if you're not the direct parent, um, your job is to probably just create peace and stability and don't feed any fires. Uh, always be, you know, the outside coach and create that normalcy for whoever that child is. That, that's, my, that's my biggest advice. And that, that worked out great for us. Not to say we didn't have hills and valleys and all that good stuff, but that was truly a, um, uh, a big part uh, of that. So, um, Ken needs to watch a game of hurling. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, did I get the job? I have not heard yet. Uh, if I've gotten it, um, recruiting-wise seems to be doing pretty, pretty darn it's picked up quite a bit, so maybe there's a question in here. Uh, I watched it, and I don't understand which part was controversial. That must have been last week's uh, video. I, I, don't, I don't know either, guys. I'm, I guess I can't talk about certain days or activities that have happened that have been on news channels. <laughs> uh, when is Ken uh, going to go casino again and film their playing? <laughs> I don't know. I see people get in trouble. Do they get in trouble for that? I would I would love to. Candy won't let me go to the casino anymore. I didn't lose. Actually, I went and uh, I think I broke even. So that, I see a lot of people do that on TikTok where they'll sit and film their, their game. That would be interesting. Um, I played uh, three-card poker for about an hour. That was fun. I stayed even for a while. Ended up losing there and had to make it, make it back in the uh, slot machine. So I wish they had let it ride at our casino here because they pulled it. That's kind of one of my favorite games. Um, have I been dealing with any mental health issues? If so, how do I cope with it? <laughs> this could be controversial. I don't know. I, I just, maybe I have mental stuff. I don't know, but I, I just, I certainly just deal with things differently. I don't want to say I suppress them. Um, maybe I, I, I have a good job at just moving on from stuff. So if I start, and, and I know, I don't know, because I, I don't have, but once you start having some things that are mental, some people can't get past those mental things, and that's what makes them mental. I just, I've always in life have had this short term, I guess it comes with being a sales guy. I take rejection and pitfalls probably more than the normal person. I get told no, deals fall through, all these things that happen that it could really get into your psyche about who you are. And trust me, don't get me wrong, I don't get bummed. I get bummed about stuff. I mean, I got kicked out of a TikTok room yesterday. It bummed me for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, but then I, I moved on. You know, you just, I'm good at moving on to the next thing because <clears throat> for me, getting to a mental situation where things are just really bothering me is just, I think it's just wasted time. And, and I have a good way of maybe overcoming those. I don't know any secrets that I could give you. I, I know Candy deals with stuff like that. I try to coach her. Um, I just, I, it's not fair for me to answer because I don't get it. And maybe, maybe I do have issues. <laughs> maybe Candy probably tell you I have all kinds of issues and could use a therapist. But I, I, I'll give you a key of of anything mental I do. I talk to too many people <laughs> about me because I wear my heart on my shoulder. I, I have friends that I'll divulge everything that I guess I just don't let it stick in my brain too long to affect anything mental. Uh, in my being. So maybe that's it. My, maybe I'm my own counselor, you know, even talking to you guys right now on camera, maybe, maybe that's my therapy, but um, yeah, mental health. I, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert. Can't help you there. Who will keep an eye on your dad if you move? Well, guess what? And if we move, we're staying in the vicinity. Um, I won't go anywhere until, you know, my dad has moved on, uh, which I don't want to talk about that, but uh, yeah, no, no, no one will do it. So I'm, I'm here until then. Um, so I'll continue my care. Um, best advice for financial stability, um, real simple, credit cards. Credit cards are killers, guys. They, they really are. Unless you're able to pay them off every month, um, don't have them. Their, their line of credit is doing nothing to help you. Um, it's just creating stress and, and, and agony. And I know in order to get them paid down, you need to basically say you had three credit cards, Two of them you pay the minimum, the third one you pay more until that one's gone and you just keep moving down until the, till they're gone. And I can say that through experience. Um, I've had my you know financial woes, um, but uh, really uh, I think is, is put, put money away. 
I think you always need to you try to put money away for a rainy day, even if it's if it's twenty bucks a month, you know, just just or ten bucks a month, you know, that's a hundred twenty dollars a year. If you can do fifty, just I mean, just put it away. Uh, try to invest some because it will come in handy, especially during you know hard times. I mean, my recruiting business didn't have a good year last last year, so our rainy day fund helped certainly cover that. So it's it's that's important for your own well-being and, and all that good stuff. So um, just and, and quit. <laughs> I'm guilty because now we're trying to think about downsizing and, and buying stuff, stuff that you just don't need. The people that. You can have a millionaire that has all the money in the world, but his family won't talk to him. Or you could have someone that's less, has less of everything that has a happier life because it's just more important things in life than stuff. And, and I know I'm, it sounds hypocritical because I have a lot of stuff, but it's just, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. So quit buying junk. I guess that's the question is go to Costco for what you went there for. <laughs> don't come home spending $300 of stuff you just don't need. Let's see what else we got here. These are great. These, by the way, these are great questions. Thoughts on Carly thinking about moving out so young. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to bring that up here real quick. This will be my last one and I'll get to the rest of your guys' questions next week. So, um, I get a call yesterday on my phone. You know, that's, that's what I, I'm the interjector. Dad, this is, Dad, I need your help. Mom, mom's not agreeing with me. So I, I have to, you know, kind of interject, but uh, Carly's looking at a house. She's, she's 18, going to be 19. She has money in the bank. She has saved, but the housing market's not great right now. And I get, you want, you're ready to grow up and spread your wings. You have, have a pretty good here at uh, the, our family nest household. You come and go as you want. You got several bedrooms upstairs, you know, it's, and she doesn't leave all that much to be quite honest. Anyways, uh, she wants to talk about buying this house that's I'm just gonna say, out of her range, it'd be something probably uh, what Andrew's looking at uh, range, and she wanted to know if we would uh, we would co-sign. <laughs> so, the thing is, is okay. So what? Put the title of the house in your name. I hold your loan. Uh, I don't. Know. I don't know. Uh, the, the bigger problem is, is I don't. I need to understand what my finances are going to be over the next 12 to 18 months, or what I'm going to do with this house and. It's going to make it, since I'm self-employed, it's always a pain to get any kind of, it doesn't matter how many, how much assets you have. It's all about, you know, your employment and being self-employed. It's, it's a little bit harder working with banks. So if I had another house to the mix, um, to what I have, I know it's an asset, but it's certainly going to make it more difficult for anything that I need to do. So uh, not that I don't want to help my daughter out. One, yes, I, I do think she's, uh, she's a little, just be patient. You got plenty of time to grow up. Just be patient. Have fun. These and this. I mean, go talk to your brother. I mean, nothing, nothing against Chase moving out, but it's not all bed of roses living on your own. Ask Blake for for that matter. It's it's uh, it's not easy. Anyways, um, you know that's that's kind of my uh, my view on that. I know I got uh, some more questions in here. I'll answer them. Hopefully, uh, it was a good video for you guys. I enjoyed talking to you. Um, hopefully, you have a great day. It's not it's the weather wise. It's not it's not sunny. It's not sunny today. So I guess. Put your sunny hat on and try to pray for it to come on in. But uh, we're halfway through Lent. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, I think I'm 18 pounds today. 18 pounds. There's Bean, troublemaker. There's the troublemaker. Look at him coming down here. There's Bean. So uh, 18 pounds right now. I'm still pushing through it. I have my do regular doctor's appointment on Monday. So I have some talks with him. And uh, anyways, guys, uh, take care of one another. Hope hopefully you have a great rest of your week and weekend. And uh, we'll see you soon. Peace out.